Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day number two here at the Canadian Swimming Trials. A great night of action last night. My name is Chris Heinz-March Watson, and with me tonight on deck, Brittany McLean, Canadian Olympian. Thank you for being here once again, Brittany. Thank you for having me. What a great start to the meet, and I'm so excited to watch what day two has in the offer. Last night was fantastic. We had a number of records set on day number one. We had a world record in the para 100 backstroke for Shelby Newkirk from the Saskatoon Lasers. That was done in the heat sessions yesterday. We had two national age group records, one yesterday by Cole Pratt of Cascade in the men's 100 back. And we had a national age group record set this morning by Etobicoke Summer McIntosh in the 400 IM for the 11-12 girls. And she's in the final tonight as a 12-year-old. Yeah, I can't even get started talking about summer. I think it's absolutely incredible. But what I think is so cool, at Cole's back in the water again tonight in the 400 IM, and he's got the 50 back as well. So we had an amazing race to take second uh, in the 100 back. So really looking forward to see what he has in store in these different events. Obviously, something like the 400 IM and 50 back. Pretty impressive. Yeah, and also last night, Marcus Thurmeyer, who just jumped on the blocks here right in front of us, he set a national record in the 100 backstroke, breaking the mark that was set back in 2009 by Pascal Wallach, always a character, that Mar Marcus Thurmeyer. We're selecting six teams here over the uh, next few days. They'll be all be announced on Sunday. We had some great racing last night. That women's 100 backstroke with Kylie Moss and Taylor Ruck. Yeah, I couldn't stop talking about it when I was up on the webcast, but the fact that, you know, not only did Kylie scare the world record, but in two times in one day did she go 58-1. Now she holds six of the top... 10 times ever swum in the race. Like, I can't put it into words, not only how proud I am, but how incredibly impressive that is. And to see that done by a Canadian, and then to see Taylor Ruck post the second fastest time in the world right now, incredible start to the meet. And those ladies have so much left to swim this week, so it makes it even more exciting. And you know, the women were on it last night, and at 200 breaststroke, Sydney Pickram and Kelsey Wog, top two times in the world so far this year, to get under that Fina A time and be added to the roster that will be announced on Sunday for Worlds. Absolutely, and I could tell Sydney was going to be on form after an incredible NCAA championship she just had, giving Lily King, the greatest breaststroker of all time, really, a run for her money. So awesome to get to see her step up and improve herself long course as well. And then to get Kelsey on her first world championship team is going to set the tone. She was a silver medalist at the short course worlds uh, just two years ago. So for her to get to do that long course coming up in 2019 sets everyone up really nicely for the Olympic year. Yeah, and they're also going to be in action tonight. Sydney in the 400 AM, Kelsey in that 100 breaststroke. We also got the Paris Swimming 100 breaststroke, and we're also going to have the 100 freestyle, where as long as the top four are under the FINA B standard, we're going to select four in the women's and men's 100 freestyle for the World Championship. So the relay selection should be an exciting race tonight. Yeah, I think this is one that I'm most looking forward to of the evening, both on the women's and men's side. The women's, it's going to be really competitive. We have so much top talent. We have half of the heat that trains in this pool, if not every day, pretty regularly. So they're very comfortable in this facility. And on the women's side, they have quite a lot of expertise in that final. And on the men's side, there's quite oppor a great opportunity for someone to step up and take a position that wasn't necessarily theirs before. You have the veteran, Yuri Kissel. You've got Marcus Stormare back in the pool. Hopefully he puts his suit on at some time. But I think there's going to be someone that we haven't seen represent Canada yet that is going to wear the Maple Leaf this summer, and I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, lots of opportunity here tonight. We're going to have a fantastic night here on day number two. Thank you for joining us, and we'll be back with the first race starting at 6 p.m. Good luck tonight, everyone.
sports news, Canadian Olympic swimming sensation Hillary Caldwell is retiring from competition. Hello? Hi Hillary, it's Derek. Oh hey Derek. I hear you're retiring. Well, listen, before you do, remember when you came out to the farm I was coaching you for a while? Well, I'm coming out to the pool and you're going to coach me. Awesome, come on over.
And welcome back, everybody, to day two finals. I'm Jason Pratt here with Brittany McLean at the 2019 Canadian Swimming Trials. And welcome back, Brittany. Day number two finals, the 2019 Canadian Swimming Trials. Well, and here we are again, Brittany, back on day two finals of the 2019 Canadian Swimming Trials. We had a pretty fantastic night last night. Saw a world's record, Shelby Newkirk, and the pair of swimming 100-meter backstroke, a Canadian record by Marcus Thormeyer in the men's 100-meter backstroke. A couple of national age group marks as well. An exciting night on day one. Day number two, here we go. And both of those individuals you just mentioned we're actually going to see take the water in the first event tonight starting with the para on the women's side, 100 meter freestyle. Then we're gonna have Marcus show up in the men's 100 meter freestyle later on in the program. So it hasn't ended yet, it's just getting started. Just getting started and we saw six of our female swimmers go underneath the standard, eligible to be selected to the world championship team last night. We've only had one male swimmer so far, but lots of opportunity tonight, relays, top four swimmers underneath that B standard, which is relatively simple to make, they all get to go represent Canada in the 4 by 100 meter freestyle relay. Yeah, and I was just speaking on the pool deck, but I really believe that there's going to be a couple men on this team that haven't gotten to race for the Maple Leaf yet. There's a great opportunity for someone new to take the reins, to take the most of this opportunity. And right now we're going to get started and watch our Women's Hunter Freestyle Para event. All right, and here we go. It is the 100 meter freestyle. It is a Para mixed category event. Shelby Newkirk. She broke the world's record in her category yesterday in the 100 meter backstroke. She's going to be swimming in this 100 meter freestyle final. We'll see her in lane number seven. Plenty of international experience in this women's field. As we get ready for our first event of the night, the girls pair out 100 meter freestyle multi class event. Yeah, and we have four different Paralympians racing in this women's 100 freestyle. Katrina Roxon, she'll be at a lane three. Aurelie Rivard out of lane four. Now she's the star, what I like to call, you know, the Rio Paralympic star. She got to carry out the Canadian flag for closing ceremonies. She's one of the most decorated Paralympic swimmers we've ever seen for the country of Canada. She won three golds and a silver medal at, at the Rio Paralympics. So uh, one of them being in this event right here. So I'm really looking forward to getting her watch race. And here we go now, the women's 100 meter freestyle para multi-class event. And they're off, and it's with a very clean start here to start our 100-meter freestyle final. Rivard in lane number four from Laval. She was 101-01 this morning, the top qualifier by her seed, and she is out in front in lane number four. Plenty of speed for the first 25 meters. Absolutely, and she's hit that 59 low barrier before, so she's probably looking to take a little bit of time off of her preliminary swim, although we're not really sure in mid-season where they're at right now. Um, as she's probably geared up for the final, the final.
finals of the of the world championships coming up in the summer. But look at that, 28.85, first 50, setting up very strong. Setting up very strong, just like you said. She was 101.0 this morning. She's about seven tenths of a second faster on the first 50 meters, and she has plenty of energy left here, hitting the last 15 meters now. All sorts of energy in the kick. She's got great rhythm as she's coming to the finish. Rivard in lane number four from Laval, trying to get under a minute, get down to that 59 low that she's been before. And here it is, Rivard, 59.88, under that minute, and a good solid swim by Rivard in lane number four. Second is going to be lane number five, Hunsaker, coming in 107.00, just over where she was this morning. And third, Paralympian Katarina rocks on in lane number three with a time of 108.61. And it's an important to note for those of you that weren't able to join us last night, all of these Paralympic events will actually be scored separately from the times that they're touching the wall so they have a point system a lot to be calculated and then we'll get our podium finishers we'll get to get their medals later on uh, this evening in the program so these aren't necessarily our top three here tonight but they're definitely the top three that touched the wall and everyone deserves a big loud shout from the crowd as we're watching the last women of the eight finish up here in this women's hunter free exactly the ipc has their own points classification system and as the swimmers in the water are swimming in a variety of para classes it's a comparable system to be able to compare s categories in the women's 100 meter freestyle we'll get back to those final results later still one swimmer left to go as our swimmer in lane number eight nikita ends from the saskatoon y laser she was 249 to 26 this morning And she's got just over 10 meters to go now. It's pretty incredible watching the effort level when you watch races like this. They're giving absolutely everything they have, and the crowd is getting behind her right now. She's got five meters to go. And she's almost there. Ends. she was 2.49 this morning. Going to drop an awful lot of time here. Look at this. Nearly 10 seconds. 2.39.97. Nikita ends. A great swim for the swimmer from the Saskatoon Y Lasers program. Teammates with Shelby Nurkirk. You can see her there beside her in lane number seven. And great that the two swimmers have each other to train with. She's got an opportunity to train with the world's record holder, Newkirk. A great training partner in Newkirk, Nikita Enns. Dropping 10 seconds from this morning to go 239 in the 100 meter freestyle. Yeah, you really can't complain when you're training with the world record holder, can you? It's great that these girls have the opportunity to go neck and neck every day and push each other to be better. Absolutely. All right, I'm here with Aurélie Rival, the winner of the first event tonight, the 100 meter freestyle of para swimming. Aurélie, ça va bien? Ça oui, ça. Oui, ça a été une très bonne course. Euh, tu es familière avec euh, le centre sportif ici à Toronto. La dernière fois, tu as fait ton meilleur temps ici. Alors, ça se représente quoi, un 59-88 pour toi? Bien, euh, en fait, euh, 59, c'est quand même rare que je l'atteigne, surtout au, euh, au mois d'avril. C'est vrai, la dernière fois, j'ai fait le record du monde aussi, il y a 4 ans déjà, ça fait un petit bout, mais, mais euh, c'est super le fun, la discipline est super vite, je me sens bien, puis 59 euh, pour maintenant, c'est vraiment bon. Alors, félicitations, on a hâte de voir nager encore plus vite cette année, cet été. Aurélie Rivard, mesdames et messieurs. few words there if you know any French. That was Aurélie after her race. She is our new Canadian national champion. And uh, we'll get to hear later if, if she was the gold medalist or if uh, someone was able to notch her out due to the calculations. And as we've said, mentioned earlier and last night, there are two para teams being selected off of this championship event. The para world championships happening sometime this fall. The exact event and location is yet to be determined. But we also know that they'll be going to the Para Pan American Games, which will be happening in Lima, Peru, later in August of this summer. Yeah, not only are there a lot of opportunities for the able-bodied athletes, but we have multiple teams here being selected for the para athletes as well. So again, we don't know until we see those final selections on the last night, but that keeps everyone on their toes and giving their all throughout all five days of competition. Great opportunities, as we discussed before. It is fairly uncommon for six different teams being selected at one event the same way that is happening here at the Canadian Swimming Trials but opportunities for all of our top swimmers both able-bodied and para to go away this summer and get some much-needed international experience and sometimes that's all it takes is one different competition or one chance to wear the maple leaf 
and then they don't stop from there. So getting a new opportunity for an athlete that may nece not necessarily have qualified if it weren't for a double selection meet. Someone like Kylie Moss was ranked, you know, I think the stat was like 200th in the world before the year that she won an Olympic medal. Uh, and that was simply due to the fact that she was a bit late blooming and then completely took the word by storm. So it's very much possible, and I really look forward to see a lot of Canadians step up as we're prepping for the Olympic year next year. Absolutely correct on that one. She went from the World Student Games the year before to the bronze medal at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Kylie Moss will see her later on in the program as we get ready to dive in now for the men's 100-meter freestyle para multi-class. Lane number four, Alexander Elliott from the University of Laval, 55-25, the top seed by time. He was seven seconds ahead of the field. We'll expect to see him up and going. A good swim by Elliott this morning. 102.49 was the second fastest swimmer. That was Caleb Arndt in lane number five from W.R. Ross McDonald Swimming. And as we continue to talk about the value of swimmers getting more international experience, Alex Elliott is actually the only Paralympian in this field, so there's a lot of potential for new swimmers in this heat to get get their name, get their hand on the wall, and get their name added to one of those lists that they haven't necessarily gotten the chance to represent Canada yet. And Canada, a lot of success at the Para Pan American Games. The last time that event was held, it was held in this pool in 2015 here in Toronto. And we'll see if Elliott gets that opportunity in lane number four. The swimmer from the University of Laval, 55-25 this morning. And a little bit faster, 54-6-6. A solid swim by Elliott in lane number four. Into the wall second in lane number five. That is Caleb Arndt hitting 102-55. Third going in lane number three, 103-6-4. That's the Cobra Swim Club's Matthew Cabreja. And your leader there, Alex Elliott, looking very strong throughout that race. Nice long tempo, pretty relaxed. So I'm... I'm thinking we might be seeing him later in the in the meet and has a little bit left in the tank to do some incredible things as we move on through the next uh, the five-day competition. A solid swim for your race winner, Alexander Elliott from the University of Laval. We'll see how his points rank stands up where we get our final placings for these swimmers later on in the night. And we're getting ready for our next event, our first able-bodied event of the night. And this one is going to be very exciting, much like our backstroke last night where we had so many women underneath that FINA A cut. We're gonna have an opportunity here in the 100 meter freestyles. We have about one swimmer left coming into the wall here in the men's 100 meter freestyle. And this is Alexa Kacik. And he was 210.69 this morning, just a little bit off of that tonight. 214.49, still a solid swim for him. And he hears the roar of the crowd. That's got to feel pretty good when you touch that well. Very proud of all of those guys in the multi class para 100 meter freestyle. And as you mentioned, we're getting set to watch our able bodied athletes swim in the 100 freestyle as well. And this is going to be quite, quite the race. And we're going to start it out. Uh, with our women's B final. And the B final are gonna be a solid race again. We saw Louise Hansen from Sweden relegated to the B final here again tonight. Foreigners not able to advance to the A final. She represents Sweden internationally. Swims at the University of Southern California in the United States up here for some international experience. And also this is a FINA sanctioned event. So these times will count towards her own country's selection. Canada's chicken farmers care about raising quality chicken you can trust. From coast to coast, we follow a mandatory, independently audited animal care program. It was developed by Canadians, including animal welfare experts, veterinarians, researchers, and people just like you. It's uniquely Canadian. It's ours. This is my farm. This is my farm. This is my farm. This is my farm. This is my farm.
right as we All right, we had a little bit of comms issue there, but um, the entire entire stadium and audience got to hear Brittany for a second. But this is the women's B final 100 meter freestyle. And as we were just talking about, Louise Hansen from Sweden, the top seed here in the B final, solid this morning, 55-17, a tenth over her entry time. Yeah, this is going to be quite the exciting race. We have Louise Hansen in the middle of the pool. We also have Gabby Duluth. Both have raced in the NCAA stage just a couple weeks ago and have had the opportunity to race some of the best in the world. We also have Kat Savard here swimming in lane three. She was a 2016 and 2012 Olympian. She has tons of race experience in both butterfly and freestyle, was on our 4x200 freestyle relay in Rio that won the bronze medal. So definitely one of our Canadian veterans swimming here. She's in lane three right now, but it looks to be Hanson's race as we get to that last 25. And Hanson out two tenths of a second better than she was this morning when she went 55-1. Looking to crack the 55 mark is Hanson in lane number four. Right up there with her is Deloof in lane number five from Club Wolverine. They're coming to the wall together at the finish. It is Louise Hanson just a tenth slower than she was this morning. 55-3-1. Deloof a little bit faster. And Savar dropping from the time she did this morning, going 55-6-9. Solid swim for the veteran. And there you go. And a couple of tents make a big difference when it comes to a meet like this, where selections are up for grabs, even especially in an event that's a relay, a selection event. So I would say Kat would be happy to get a couple of tents slower, and hopefully she's got a couple great races up for grabs here. That way you see Louise Hansen, our heat, B Heat winner, 55-31. And it is that A final coming up next, Brittany. And, you know, all of the girls that swam this morning, they're all underneath the standard to get on the relay. Now it comes down to who can get their hand on the wall. The top four will get to go. And we have a very experienced international field swimming tonight in the A final of our women's 100-meter freestyle. Absolutely. So as you mentioned, four will get to go on a relay position, but two will get to swim the event individually if they are under that FINA A time. That golden standard for this one, 54-49. If these ladies are able to put together a good race, there's going to be plenty of them under that. Four of them were under it, have been under that FINA A standard before. And four, the four top seeds either train here or have trained here very regularly. They're comfortable in this pool. They're ready for this. They're not in an unfamiliar environment. And I think they're really ready to go, motivating each other. I think it's so incredible. Six of these ten ladies have swam at a world championships before. So you talk about experience, but it is so, so valuable when it comes to a meet of this caliber with the nerves, with the adrenaline, all the different things. But we're seeing our first appearance of Penny Alexiak in a final session here. Right, she was the top seed in the 50-meter butterfly, swam the fastest time of anybody, did it in the preliminaries, opted not to swim it again at night. She is a co-Olympic champion with Simone Manuel from the United States in the 100-meter freestyle, and she's going to be swimming in lane number five. She's the number two seed. She's going to be swimming beside Taylor Rock, who swam 54-41. It was underneath that magic standard. I really don't think that the standard is going to be an issue for our top two swimmers, probably and hopefully not even for our top four. Yeah, and this is another medal race that Canada won a medal in in the Rio Olympic Games, has continued to be a threat on the world stage the next final years. Now, what I felt was we're watching the Olympic champion in the 100 meter freestyle a couple of years ago. We're also watching people that have had tons of experience. Kyla Sanchez has been lights out the last couple of years. Rebecca, unbelievable in this event as well. Then you have someone like Alexia, who's one of the other girls who has dropped below that 54 second barrier. Her best time is 53.95. She'll be swimming at a lane seven, but pretty much from two all the way down. Then we look at, I'm just looking at this heat. It's completely full. Maggie McNeil, another person we've talked about yesterday. She had an absolutely amazing NCAA season, has put herself in contention to make this Canadian team. And really everyone that's qualified here for the top 10 is contention to make a Canadian team. Yeah, it's a great start here in the women's 100 meter freestyle. We're going to want to see if anybody can get down and underneath 26 seconds on the way out. Nobody was under 26 this morning. 26-2 was the fastest 50 split, and that was by Taylor Ruck. And just the height and Ruck and, and Penny and Rebecca, you just see how long and strong they are through the water. Approaching the first turn, it's Taylor Ruck right now. She's going to flip 25-7-9 that first 50. 
5.79 is about a half second slower than she was when she went 52.7 last summer at the Pan Packs. But Ruck, Sanchez, and Smith all went their best time last summer in Tokyo at the Pan Pacific Championship. And it is Ruck with the advantage in lane number four. Alexiak right there with her. Nobody closes like Penny Alexiak. And here she comes at the wall, though. It's Ruck in a 53.26, a solid swim, a good swim for Alexiak. At 53.6, she's not been that fast in two years. So it's a solid swim for Penny Alexiak to finish second. Sanchez in third, 54.2. Maggie McNeil, NCAA is down to this now. She finishes fourth, 54.5. Rebecca Smith, 54.8. Look at the depth here in the women's 100-meter freestyle. Yeah, that's got to make you pretty proud to be Canadian. We've got some very world-class times there in our top eight, and starting with our first couple ladies, as you spoke about. Not surprising to see Taylor Ruck being our champion here, but 53-26, a little bit off her personal best, but a great in-season time for her right now. And then, of course, you talked about I'm really impressed with that swim at a penny, 53.60. That's the fastest we've seen her since the Olympic Games. It's a really good marking for this time of the year. She's going and getting her individual spot to race at World Championships. And then she's got another teammate there with her, Kayla Sanchez, who she trains with every day. That would be a very special opportunity. Maggie McNeil is going to make her first World Championship appearance. I'm not too surprised. This afternoon I translated her yards conversion time. She's done great things yards. It would have converted to a 53.81. Again, yards isn't nearly exact, but around the ballpark that she just was, 54.5. So it's good to see her. Not surprised to see her, but great to see her making her first world championship team. And we're about to hear from the ladies down on the pool deck. And it's going to be a very solid relay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Team Canada relay for the Ethereum World Championships this summer in Guangzhou, Korea. First Taylor, 53.26, happy with that time with a couple months of preparation still to go before Worlds. What was the question? I'm sorry. The question was, are you happy with the time with a couple months of preparation still to go before Worlds? Oh my God, I'm so excited to go to South Korea with these girls and you know, I'm just having blast. Excited to go to South Korea. Penny second in the air, 53.6, individual swim in the relay. It's gonna be exciting to compete with these other three ladies. Super exciting. I feel like the teams, the team just keeps on training for the better, and I'm excited to see what happens even next year. Great performances. Third in the race is Kyla Sanchez, 54-22. Important to get into that top four, obviously, on the relay spot. Must be excited to be back on national team. Yeah, sure. like, uh, it's been different this year. We haven't been like, training together, so it's like nice to get in the water, just race them, and like, see where these girls are at, and it's nice to be on a relay. Does it add some comfort racing in your home pool? Oh my gosh, for sure. Like I was talking to these girls, like diving in, it feels like training with super bright lights. <laughs> so like, yeah. Congratulations, and fourth in the race, 54-5-1, Maggie McNeil, congratulations. On to the relay team. Was that part of your goal here tonight, was just to get into that top four? Oh, uh, I knew it was a possibility, but I think I just wanted to go out and do the best that I could and hopefully go a PB in under 55 seconds. So a personal best time as well, which is a great accomplishment. Excited to go off and race for Team Canada. Oh yeah, definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the four ladies representing Team Canada on the 4x100 freestyle relay this summer. And some great swims out of those girls. That time by Ruck, the third fastest time in the world this year. And the time by Alexiak, that is the seventh fastest time in the world in the women's 100 meter freestyle. Very solid swimming. And it is a relay team that will be contending for a medal this summer in Korea. Yeah, they are putting themselves in a big threat position to take one of those pieces of hardware back home to Canada. But I was not disappointed there. I said I was excited for the Women's Hunter Free, and I'm definitely uh, happy with that decision. I thought they did amazing, and it was an exciting race from start to finish. I think the men's one's going to be quite as quite as competitive, and I think what I'm most excited about is to see more men and, and making that Team Canada that haven't been on it before. Absolutely, and I, I agree, and one thing that is unique, and we haven't touched on it yet, that Sanchez and Alexiak, teammates, teammates in training here in Toronto, they're also going to be teammates in the brand new ISL Pro League, which will get up and start running this fall. Something that wasn't a part of swimming when you were in Brittany, but something new for the sport coming this September. It is. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm very intrigued to learn more about it. I've seen it all over the media and through social media, but I'm looking forward to cheering on some, another opportunity to cheer on some Canadians.
Here we go, the B final in the men's 100 meter freestyle. Top qualifier Dylan Carter represents Trinidad and Tobago internationally. It was 49 3 9 this morning. It was a solid swim for the swimmer in lane number four. And this is a race that obviously it's a sprint freestyle race, but it always it also takes quite a lot of race strategy and knowing the speed you want to start with, how you want to flip turn, how you want to how many strokes you want to take. There's so many details that go in when you watch it, you can't quite appreciate it fully, but a good start can make that much of a difference. And Ayubi in lane number three out in front 236. That is much faster than he was this morning. Carter's got a personal best of 4860. So we'll look to see if he can come back and he is in lane number four. Dylan Carter has now taken over the lead as they come to the wall. It's going to be Carter in four in the B final, a time of 49.71. Mugenic second in lane at number five, 50.03. And Ayubi coming in third in lane number three, a time of 50.81. Yeah, and Carter added a little bit to the time he posted this morning. I think he went out a little bit relaxed. You could tell he dropped back a little bit and had a bit left in the tank. So uh, he'll have some time with his coach to re reevaluate that race strategy and see what he wants to improve on. But you, just as we talked about earlier, these swimmers, these international swimmers coming here, using it as an opportunity to try out a few different race strategies. They're still a few months away from the World Championships. Carter obviously will be representing Trinidad at the World Championships. And here he is trying out perhaps a different race strategy to see how it works at our Canadian Swimming Trials. For sure. And we're going to see maybe they have other opportunities to qualify. Maybe this is their last chance. So... We don't know about each story for every country, but it is pretty awesome to see people that want to come to Canada, that know it's a really great place to race, that want to train and race in a world-class pool. And, you know, knowing that we're one of those people that people want to, we're one of those countries that people want to come see. You're exactly right, and this is a fantastic pool. We saw all sorts of world best at the time in 2015 at the Pan American Games, which was the last big international meet that was held here. Canada in line to be hosting the Pan Pacific Games the next time around in 2022. And it's more than likely going to end up here in the Toronto location, which will be a great event for all Canadians to come and see and experience top level international swimming. It's been 16 years since Canada has hosted an event like that. For sure. And the closest we've gotten is to the Pan Ams here. That was the reason this pool has been built. So 2015. So a lot of these swimmers just got introduced to this pool due to that competition, and it's such a great facility to have. It's actually just been announced that it's going to be our host for the 2020 Olympic Trials, just coming up one year exactly from now. So these swimmers are getting used to the idea of their warm-up, their warm-down pool, where their physio and massage are going to be located, where their team sits, how they're going to go behind the blocks. It's the little things that you don't necessarily think about that become really important when it comes down to it on a race day. So we're going to have some award ceremonies coming up very shortly for our para swimmers and the women's and the men's 100 meter freestyle before we move on to the final in the men's 100 meter freestyle. And so very shortly, we'll get to see where our swimmers ended up on the IPC points cl uh, classification for top three in both the women and the men's 100 meter freestyle. That looks to be Shelby Newkirk from Saskatoon Lasers. It's going to be our bronze medalist in the women's 100 meter freestyle. And this won't be her last. It's not her first time on the podium, and it probably won't be her last. So big smiles there for Newkirk. She will take home the bronze medal in this multi-class 100-meter freestyle. We saw her break the world's record yesterday in the, her category for the 100-meter backstroke. Paralympian from Rio 2016, Katarina Rocks on our silver medalist. There she is, our champion here tonight, breaking that one-minute barrier. Aurelie Villarivard, one of our most decorated Paralympic athletes. She was our flag bearer in Rio and continues to succeed here three years later. So congratulations to all three of them on a great race here tonight. 
And our Paralympic swimmers getting ready to gear up for their run into the Paralympic Games in Tokyo in 2020. They'll have the World Championships in the fall, the pa Para Pan American Games in August. A couple high level international events. A year out from the Olympic Games. Here are our medalists in the men's para multi class event. Look at that. We had a tie. Ah, that's something we don't see all the time. Look at that. A tie in the para swimming 100 meter freestyle. Tie for the bronze medal in the men's 100 meter freestyle. Looks like we've only got one of them at the podium at the moment. Big smiles. And if anyone's wondering what they're getting handed when they're getting atop the podium, they get their medal around their neck and a nice plush from the Chicken Farmers of Canada there to take home as a great memory. Chicken Farmers of Canada, great supporters of Swimming Canada, been a partner for a number of years. Great recipes. You can check out the swimming.ca website if you're looking to get a great recipe from the Chicken Farmers. Macabrasia from Cobra Swimming, silver medal. And there's Alexander Elliott picking up the gold medal from the University of Laval. Solid 54-6-6 swim for him in the 100-meter freestyle. And a lot of our Paris swimmers are coming out of the one of the national training centers that they have in, in Quebec. And they've seen such great success. They have a, a great team out there that gets to go head-to-head -head every day with one another. And I think it's such a great opportunity that they have this unified program that they can all give their all every day and understand to some extent, what they're going through and have each other, other to support. You are correct. There's little pockets of great parasimming programs throughout the country, including Saskatoon, the Y Lasers program with Shelby Newkirk, the world record holder. And they've got a few other swimmers here as well competing. Now we're getting ready for that men's 100 meter freestyle. We're going to have our finalists march on. And we saw a solid swim out of Yuri Kissel this morning, 48.95 in the morning. He's been 48.2, but that was back in Rio when he finished 10th in the men's 100 meter freestyle. One of his better swims since then. But Marcus Thormeyer, he's already been 48.7, and that's what he did to win the U Sports Swimming Championships. For sure. And Yuri Kissel is our obvious veteran of the field, as is Thormeyer. But this 100 freestyle, ever since the Brent Hayden days, it's been Kissel since 2013 and he has been he was very close to the a cut this morning Thormeyer will look to kind of scare that a cut as well he's coming off a canadian record performance last night then we've got some great relay spots that are pretty interesting we have someone like josh liendo very young never made a senior team before and then we have someone like ruslan gaziev as well he made the team in the 2018 pan packs he's also still a teen Javier Acevedo is also in this field. He was on the Rio Olympic team just a couple years ago. More of a backstroke specialist, but has swam this really the last couple of years. So I'm continuing to speak, but there's quite a lot of people here on this heat that can take away one of the spots on this relay. And it's going to be, as we talked about, the top four to get to the wall will be on and named to our relay team. Plenty of experience, but a couple 16, 17-year-old swimmers, James Abuke swimming in lane zero from the shoe swaps in interior BC, 17 years old. You mentioned Joshua Lendo in lane number two. He is 16 years old and he's just right at that national age group mark for 15 to 17 year old boys. We'll see if he can get down to that. It's 49.76, he is 50.1 this morning. All right, so keep your eyes in the middle of the pool. Yuri Kissel is your man to beat there and then we'll see Thor Meyer there beside him in five. Carson Olufsen, who's been on the national team the last couple years swimming this relay, he'll be in three. And Kissel in the black cap in lane number four with the Maple Leaf. He's a top seed after a 48.95 this morning. Off to a good start. Lendo down at the bottom in lane number three, also out to a very strong start. We're going to see what we get out of these swimmers in the first 50 meters. We want to see 23 mid, 23 high at the most. Kissel actually just made a big career move. He now trains in this pool himself. He used to be out in British Columbia training in the Vancouver Center, also at UBC. But now he's made a move to swim here in this pool. But watch this exciting race. 
Bormeyer, he's out three tenths of a second better than when he went 48-7 at U Sport. Look at this, lanes two, three, four, and five. They're coming to the wall together. Remember, top four, get on the relay. And Thormeyer, 4876, he's underneath the FINA A cut. The only swimmer in the field to do it. Kissel coming in second in lane number four, 4911. Pisani in third in lane number one. And fourth, right now unofficially grabbing that last relay spot, 4953. Carson Olofsson just missing it. Josh Lendo, but that is a new Canadian national age group record, 15 to 17. He still has one more year in this category, 49.71 for Lendo. This is quite the impressive, and I, I talked about the fact that we're going to see some new names. Will Pisani, though, we got the chance to talk a lot about him last night, actually. He was our gold medalist in the 50 fly. Swimming out of Florida State, obviously made some huge improvements in the last little while, but this is going to be not only his first, you know, national team of pretty much any sort we haven't really seen him at all on the screen so really happy to see some new names coming up especially when we're prepping for olympic year he takes the dominant third we actually saw six different men seven seven guys that were under that 50 second barrier so it's been a it's been a little while since we've had seven males under 50 seconds i think this is a great stepping stone as we work toward the next couple of years i think that's an awesome state for swimming in canada right now and like we mentioned we did see thormeyer 48.76. He is our only one under the standard. Kissel potentially a little disappointed with that swim, but well, he'll have many opportunities. He has a 50 free. He's also got, going to get the chance to swim that on the relay team this summer. Marcus, another win here tonight on day number two, 48.76. Happy with the time? A little bit off what you've already been this season. Uh, I'm happy with the time. <laughs> I think. There's a lot of room to improve, and getting an opportunity to swim at the summer and then close some gaps that I need to work on is uh, it's pretty exciting. And all about getting into those top two spots to be able to swim the individual event. Yeah, uh, getting my hand on the wall top two is uh, kind of a goal of mine coming into this, so being able to do that feels great. Congratulations to Marcus Thormau. Yuri Kissel in for second, 49-11, the individual, and swimming the relay with these guys in Korea. Yeah, I'm just super stoked to be able to swim it individually and then uh, also get to swim it with my friends here, so it's going to be fun. Have you done any research into the type of sandwiches that you're going to seek out while you're in Korea? I know you're a big sandwich guy. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah, especially the Korean barbecue. Yuri Kiss is going to be in all the Korean barbecue places. I think they just call it barbecue, though, in Korea, so we'll have some fun with that. In for third was Will Pisani. Congratulations on to the relay team heading into Korea this summer. Um, just it's these guys. Um, I had an opportunity to swim with them last summer and it was amazing. And I'm excited to swim again with my boys. Great to be back on the national team for a second summer in a row. Absolutely, it's amazing. Pretty tight field coming into the wall. Did you know where you were when you were hitting the wall or was it just about putting your head down and getting that hand on that uh, touch pad? Um, yeah. I knew I went out quick. I kind of just told everyone <laughs> in, the, in the writing room, I was like, I'm going out, boys. If you want to come with me, you can. And uh, yeah, I just got home, put my head down and somehow finished, which was awesome, so. Congratulations, and fourth place on the relay, Carson Olson, congratulations. Happy with that time of 49.53, or was it just about the top four? Oh, thank you so much. The time was everything. I didn't expect to be that fast, but I'm so pumped that I'm here, and like, I get to be back on team with these guys again. So excited. Anything specific you're looking forward to other than the racing and maybe some barbecue with uh, Yuri over here? I haven't even let myself think about it. <laughs> Congratulations, gentlemen, Team Canada Relay for the World Championships this summer. Congratulations, guys. And what's so important about these relays, Brittany, is at the World Championships, if the relay finishes in the top 12, they automatically qualify that relay to compete later on next summer and get a spot for Tokyo 2020. Absolutely. And I need to take this opportunity to formally apologize to Will Pisani. He was on our Pan Pacific Championship team just a year ago, so this will be a great chance for him to get his first world championship opportunity. He'll get another opportunity to wear the, the maple leaf on his cap, so really happy to see all four of those guys with smiles on their faces, excited for what's to come, but also understanding that they have room for improvement and there's big growth there. I agree, and I think that probably Joshua Lendo is a little disappointed he didn't get that he was fifth. He didn't get that fourth place, but he should be very happy at a 49.71 Canadian National Age Group record. 
and swimming in Canada should be very happy that a 16-year-old, the youngest swimmer to ever go under 50 seconds in Canada, 49.71, the future looks very bright for sprinting here in our men's team. And we've done in this country so much work on the development program, so much work on getting our youngsters up and giving them world experience. So a great opportunity here. He'll have a chance to swim at something like World Juniors and uh, hopefully in the coming year, maybe in Olympic Games in his future. And here we go now, the B final, the women's 100 meter breaststroke. And top seed in lane number four, Miranda Stever from the Toronto Swim Club. She was 110.84 this morning. It'll be interesting to see if we can get any ladies in this B final under that 110 barrier. A huge kind of notching point when we talk about women's breaststroke getting under that 110. We'll be looking to see as many ladies as possible, similar to the men under 50, but trying to get as many ladies under that 110. And Steve, that was the best time for her this morning at 110.84. She was 33.2 to the 50. We'll see where she is here tonight. And Steve is coming in at 33.0 a little bit quicker, but so is Paula Garcia. She's a foreign swimmer from the University of Akron. She was 111.11. She's out in front in 32.70, swimming in lane number six. Out very solid beside her in lane number five. It is Lily Chacoin from Neptune. And it's got 15 meters left to go now in the B final of the girls. 100 meter breaststroke still with the lead is Garcia in lane number four. Trying to get down to 110. The middle of the pool, lanes three and four now moving up. They're up with Garcia. It's Kirkshanks and Stever at the wall. 110.57. Miranda Stever improving on that best time that she did this morning. 110.84. For sure. And all three of those top ladies have taken a bit of time off of their best. So I'm... I would like to think they're happy with that, to take time off at a, an event like this when you're putting so much pressure into performing in the morning and then qualifying through to the finals. To see them continuing to notch their times down is very impressive. And it's a measure of a mature swimmer to be able to go and swim a best time in the morning and then repeat that again at night and improve upon that time. So solid swimming here in our B final of the women's 100 meter breaststroke. And up next, we're going to have our award presentation for the women's 100-meter freestyle. And that will include Penny Alexiak and Taylor Ruck, the third fastest and now the seventh fastest swims in the women's 100-meter freestyle so far this competitive season. And Kyla Sanchez swimming a very solid swim as well. She broke the world junior record in the short course 50-meter freestyle earlier in the year. And here we go with our awards presentation. Yeah, I'm sure a pretty special moment. All three of these girls have uh, different opportunities to race and train together. Right now, Taylor Ruck in her freshman season at Stanford. So she hasn't been back here in quite some time. Uh, it looks like they've had some fun this week, getting to reconnect, getting to get back in the water as a, as a unified group. So right now you're watching. Penny be confused as always. <laughs> She's a great sport about it, but always laughing, having fun on the pool deck. There you see Kayla San Kyla Sanchez will take our bronze medal as she stands atop the podium right now. Not a personal best time, but still great for this time of year. Gets her hand on the wall, deals with high pressure situations, and is now going to be representing Canada on the relay this summer. And as you were just saying, uh, Taylor Ruck, a freshman down at Stanford, helped her team win a national championship for the women's NCAAs. A solid swim this time of the year by Ruck. 53-26, third fastest time so far in the world. It's great to see such world-class times coming at a meet, not only at this time of year, but from Canada. And knowing that we have more to come in the summer, it's it's awesome to be a swim fan right now, and I couldn't be more proud. And they are, they are the top three girls in our women's 100-meter freestyle. Up next, we're going to have the A final in the women's 100-meter breaststroke. And this should be an interesting event. Yes, talk about interesting. We're definitely got a lot on the line of this one. I think it starts with the big storyline of last night, Kira Smith. She won the race initially, touched first in a time of 2.21, the world-leading time in the 200 breaststroke currently. Then finds out she's disqualified. Huge hit to her mental game. Everything is probably thrown off. I'm really excited to see how Kira is able to bounce back. 
I'm excited to see who else is going to be up there with her. She was our top seed this morning. Also, she came back over a second faster on that second 50 than anyone else did in this field. So look for her to charge coming home. Showing great mental fortitude and a bounce back after disqualification the night before. She was only nine one hundredths over her seed time at 107.14 this morning. Smith, a finalist in the Rio Olympic Games in the 100 meter breaststroke. She picked up a silver medal in this event at the Commonwealth Games last summer. Plenty of international experience in the middle of the pool. Kelsey Wog, you just saw her in lane number three in that brightly colored suit. She got on to the world championship team after that disqualification last night, but even though she was on in the disqualification, those three girls put up the first, second, and third fastest time in the 200 meter breaststroke so far this year. Now out of this field, you will definitely be keeping an eye out for Faith Nelson on that first 50. She'll be swimming in lane five. She's out like a rocket. Don't be surprised, though, if Kira Smith runs her down in the second 50. Kelsey Wog, also more of a 200 specialist, so she'll probably close really well. We've got two Olympians in the field. They come in lane four and lane six. Kira Smith and Rachel Nickel were our two 100 best strokers three years ago at the Rio Games. And as you said, expect to see Nelson out quick. She was 31.5 this morning, a full half second better than anybody else. But as you said, we've got some strong 200 meter specialists in Wog in three. We've got Smith in four. We'll look to see them come back and see if Nelson can get out and break away from the field. She's in the black cap in lane number five in the center of the pool. As the girls come to the first 50 meter wall, Smith keeping right up with Nelson. And here we go with the turn. Nelson, though, getting to the wall first. 31 1 4, four tenths of a second ahead of Smith in lane number four. Rachel Nickel, an Olympian in this event, swimming in lane number six. 31 7, a half second better than she was this morning. And this is where they're starting to dig deep. Only 25 left. Faith Nelson looking very strong, but here comes Rachel Nickel, not willing to give up her spot on this national team. And here goes Smith in lane number four. Wog, the 200 meter specialist, trying to get up there as well. Nelson in lane number five, looking to hold on, but this one is Smith in lane number four, 106.54. A best time for her. Wog coming in second at 107.5. That's a lifetime best time for Kelsey Wog by a half second. She was 108.0 last summer at the Pan Pax. Great swimming out of the middle of the pool by Kiara Smith, Kelsey Wog, Rachel Nickel coming in third in lane number six. And an awesome performance there. A great bounce back, there, bounce back for Kira Smith. Now we're going to have to wait and see. I think she's probably holding her breath until this is announced official. Uh, again, there was arguments on last night's race. Her coaches were definitely trying to fight it, but it appears that the race times are popping up. Her time of 106.54 just under that is a new pb actually her best time was a 106.62 and that's what we're waiting to hear the results on the board are official so kiara smith bouncing back from that disqualification last night in the 200 going 106.54 and putting up what appears to be the second fastest time in the world so far this year kiara smith kelsey wog also going underneath the standard in 107.54, both of these swimmers will compete in this event. Ladies and gentlemen, your national champion, championship. and adding her name to the roster for the FINA World Championships in the 100 breaststroke, Kira Smith. Kira, a big 24 hours preceding this race, 106.54. You'll win here tonight. You're on the team. Got to be pretty happy right now. I'm pretty happy right now, oh, yeah. Do you like that time? Are you happy with the 106.5 right now with a couple months to go still with some prep? Totally, it's the best time and definitely my best time in April. So it's really excited about that. Going to build off it going into Worlds and really focus on the 100. Is, uh, we've been asking this question a lot of people. Are you familiar with Korea? Are you excited to go over and compete? Or is it just about racing at Worlds for Team Canada? Oh, I'm so excited to go to Korea. I'm not familiar with it and I'm very excited to compete for Canada at Worlds. Congratulations, Kate Smith. You're winning your title 100 breaststroke and newest member of Team Canada for the Worlds this summer. Yeah, and that's, that's a very happy swimmer. Very happy to see that bounce back says a lot about her mental game. It says a lot about how fit she is. It says a lot about the kind of swimmer she is. Very impressed there with Kira. Now that, as mentioned, is a personal best time. So incredible for her to drop a time like this in April at this time of year. She's looking to make some improvements on that and now take the positive, turn the negatives into positives and make the 100 one of her best she's ever done.
And it goes back to something you said last night, Brittany, like as a youngster coming up and swimmers looking at this, try not to ch pick and choose one or only two events. She missed it in the 200 by being disqualified. Her only other opportunity was an event the next day, very strong mentally, and here she is in the 100, not just a 200 specialist, which has been her bread and butter event, but here she is winning in a best time, a 106.5, getting herself onto Canada's team in the World Championships. And this is something Kira has worked very hard at over time, gotten experience, gotten some races under her belt, gotten some disappointments under her belt. And every failure, I, I like to say, you have something to learn from it and you have growth from it. So not that last night was a failure, it was for the best time in the world, but she did unfortunately get disqualified. She's able to turn that around and make something really incredible out of it. And let's see what happens here now in the B final, the men's 100 meter breaststroke. Top seed, Moncalf Ballman in lane number four from Point Claire. He is a four national swimmer, but 103.88 this morning. Top Canadian swimming in lane number five, Jeremy Derry Bergeron from University of Laval, a half second back at 104.25. Strong outing on the first 50 by Jean Photo from Mississauga. He was 104.28, but he's got the lead, it appears, as they come to the first 50 wall. 29.50 for Photo. And it's pretty tight there. We see our three top guys within two tenths of a second. So it'll be interesting to see who left enough in the tank to close strong. And they're starting to come together now with less than 25 meters to go in the B final. Photo still up in front. Balaman in lane at number four, moving his way back up. Balaman this morning, 103.88. Top seed in the B final. At the finish, it is lane number four, Balaman. Winning in a time of 103.17. Swimmer from Point Claire, Mon Chef Balaman is actually listed as a foreigner. So, so we're, we're looking, looking for John Fateau for our top seated Canadian there. He touches 103.53. And. We're going to have award presentations, but then it's going to be the A-final, the men's 100-meter breaststroke, and they have their work cut out for them. That FINA A-cut is right down at the Canadian record standard. It's a 59.95. The Canadian record goes back to 2012. Scott Dickens swam 59.85. We haven't had too many Canadians. Richard Funk is the only other one who's ever been under a minute. He's a number two seed tonight. Number one seed is a 16-year-old swimmer from Kenora, Gabe Mastro Mateo swam 101.45 this morning. All of these swimmers a little bit off that standard of 59.9. But a couple 16-year-olds will be in our A final looking to see if perhaps they can get themselves on the world championship team, maybe in a relay position. Absolutely. So our selection committee is going to be looking for, you know, who's going to be touching the wall here first, who's our best Canadian at the time to represent us on a medley relay. We'll get there soon, but right now we're in the men's 100 meter freestyle podium finish. These guys worked very hard and they're ready to get their hardware. So here we go. Will Pisani takes the bronze. Again, huge performances from him so far at this trials. He already took a gold medal home yesterday in the 50 fly. Now it's bronze. He will be on his second Canadian national team here. So a great performance and his first time coming third here and in the 100 free. It was the best time for him. He took a little bit off from where he was last summer in the pair at the Pan Pacific Championships. 49-4 for Pisani here. Kissel probably not happy with that time. 49-11, a little bit slower than he was this morning, but good enough to get himself on the relay. And Marcus Thormeyer right on his best time. 48-76 underneath the FINA A cut. And he took the gold. And I think the important thing for Yuri here, he's going to get the opportunity to watch that race over again. He can look with his coach, see what they can work on, see the fine-tuned details. He's got more races to come. This isn't the end. We're going to see Yuri. And speaking of more races to come, he did pick up the bronze medal in the 50-meter freestyle last summer at the Pan Pacific Championships. We'll see where he can get himself down to and perhaps qualify in the individual event in the 50 later on in our program. But just as Yuri has been the name we've seen in the 100 freestyle ever since Brent Hayden, as you spoke of, since Scott Dickens taken the 100 breaststroke to new heights, it's been Richard Funk that we've seen on the Canadian stage for the last couple of years. Now, he's the only one that's broken a minute other than Scott Dickens, and he's the only one that's been hovered around this uh, FINA A standard you talk about. But there's so many youngsters in this field that are ready to get there to sell a national title. 
And we're going to see if any of those young guns can jump up and step up to the senior team here. Perhaps this may be our first event in which we see that leap on the men's side. It happens all of the time in the girls' side of the competition, but we've yet to see a, men from the, a man from the junior team jump up onto the senior team. This may be our first opportunity here. We also have James Dergasoff out in lane two. He was our champion last night in the Turner breaststroke. Watch for him on the second 50. He likes to close strong. He likes to pull pull off that outside last couple meters smoke. Eli Wall also second place in the Turner breaststroke yesterday. So the two of them are used to racing neck and neck very frequently. And Dergasoff, he took a big lop of time off of that entry time. Only entered in 103.9. Down this morning to a 102.3. Looked excellent last night, winning that 200-meter breaststroke. Touched out Eli Wall, who's going to be right beside him in lane number one here in the 100. And I talked in the women's. It was Faith Nelson that takes it out very strong, that first 50. But in this one, look for Alex Milanovic. He was swimming out of lane six. Youngster from Etobicoke swimming. He was your bronze medalist at the junior Olymp the Youth Olympics last summer in the 50-meter breaststroke. So he's out to like a rocket. He'll be taking your spot in lane six. But again, we're really going to be looking for the gold medalist of this race. The winner of this is our only real shot at world championships here, unless they're able to pull off a huge upset, and I would love to see it. Two guys under 59, under 50, in the 59-second mark. And we'll see what we can get out of these gentlemen here on the 100 meter breaststroke. 101, 45 was the time by Mastro Mateo. He was out quick, 28-7 this morning. Milanovic was 28-8. We'll see what they get to here. The first 50 meters, three, four, five, and six, all swimming together right now at that 35 meter mark. Yeah, and we have Mastro Mateo in the middle of the pool, as well as Alex Milanovic, that are still capable of making a junior team. So don't count them out if they're not touching here first. And it's Funk, though, 28-4. That's four tenths of a second better than he was this morning. Mastro Mateo, a tenth slower. So now everybody is chasing the veteran. Funk in lane number five. James Guest had a very good 50 right there on the other side of Alex Milanovic in the white cap. But right now it is all Richard Funk with the last 25 to go. Funk looking very strong. He didn't look particularly good this morning, but he looks great tonight. He's got a half body length on Mastro Mateo and four. Here comes Mastro Mateo at the finish though. And it is Richard Funk, 101-18, just six one hundredths of a second ahead of the 16 year old Mastro Mateo in lane number four. Bronze, it looks like right now, and officially goes to Eli Wall in lane number one. The solid swim at 102-04. And we won't be able to know that until Sunday, but we're hoping that we'll qualify Richard a spot on that World Championships team. And what a story he is. He qualified for the World Championships in 2013, again in 2015, again in 2017. This could potentially be his fourth yeah, World Championships. After a little bit of upset after not qualifying for the Olympic Games in 2016, it is great to see him with fire, with excitement, continuing to race, continuing to perform, continuing to be the best that Canada has. And you are correct, and probably our winner of the 100 meter breaststroke will get a spot in the four by 100 medley relay. Also get an opportunity to potentially swim on the mixed four by 100 medley relay. And Canada has had a lot of good fortune on those mixed relays, both freestyle and medley, picking up medals at the last two world championships. They're gonna be brand new Olympic events in Tokyo. In the 100 breaststroke, Richard And we're gonna hear from Funk in a moment. Not quite at that FINA A time, but still under priority three of the selection, a chance to be named on Sunday for the medley relay. Yeah, right on. Third priority. It's pretty good? <laughs> pretty, pretty good. So are you happy with the win here tonight, obviously? Was that what this race was all about, was just the win and not necessarily worrying about the time? Yeah, I mean, I think I, it's what I always think about when I swim. Uh, try not to think about times too much. Um, been a bit of a tough year, but well, uh, there's still lots of time to improve. So let's go from here. A few more months to get ready for Worlds. Could you see Gabe Asperteo next to you closing in on those last 15 meters? N not only a splash, but yeah. So you knew he was coming. You knew you had to get your hands on that wall pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, he's a really, really good swimmer. Like, he's twice my size. I think he's 16. So, I mean, that fu the, the future for that kid is really bright. 
Congratulations, Richard Funk, winner here tonight in 101-18 in the men's 100 breast. And it's so special to see those veterans giving credit to the youngsters up and coming. Getting Cannabis a chicken farmers care about raising quality chicken you can trust. From coast to coast, we follow a mandatory, independently audited animal care program. It was developed by Canadians, including animal welfare experts, veterinarians, researchers, and people just like you. It's uniquely Canadian. It's ours. This is my farm. 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 As you were saying, great to see a swimmer with the experience of Richard Funk giving credit to the youngsters coming up. Not only did he swim well, he broke the Canadian National Age Group mark, boys 15-17 in the 100-meter breaststroke. And there's so much more to come, and I think that's the most exciting part. Take this as a stepping stone. Understand that there's still so much ahead of you and work towards how you're going to improve and how you're going to continue growing and keep getting excited about what the future has in store. So much more to come. He broke that record for the first time as a 15-year-old in the 15 to 17 category, breaking it now as a 16-year-old. One more year to go for Master Mateo in that age category as we get underway with the B final of the women's 400-meter individual medley. Top seed in lane number four, representing Ohio State University, Catherine Demir. Time of 450.12 this morning. 400 IM, a very challenging event. Brittany, you've got to swim fly, back, breaststroke, and freestyle. Technically demanding, a lot of demand on speed and endurance. Probably one of the more painful events in our sport. For sure. It is a spectator dream and a swimmer nightmare, I like to call it, <laughs> because it truly is one of the most physically demanding. But it is so fun to watch because you see four different strokes. You see everyone having different strengths within those four different strokes. You see change in tempos. You see change in race strategies. You see, you know, these breaststrokers. I love watching the breaststroke because there's people that completely fall off and then people that completely take off. Um, and then the freestyle is that dig as deep as possible. Who's going to be as tough as nails and get the job done? So, so much fun to watch the 400 AM. Very hard to swim it and swim it well is even harder. Really looking forward to watching the A final, but right now we're focusing on the backstroke leg of our women's B final. And as you said, not many feelings are as gut wrenching as that turn from the breaststroke to the freestyle at the end of the 400 IM. Spectators' delight and swimmers' nightmare. I think you hit it right on the head there. Demler through the first 50 meters of backstroke out in front, 140.49, a full second ahead of Megan Dalkey in lane number six. Dalkey is swimming for the Kamloops Classic, a swimmer at the UBC Thunderbirds. Her team won the University Sport Championship for females earlier in February as she's trying to make her move back up to Daumler in lane number four. And we'll see where we get to through the first 200 meters, the halfway point, as the swimmers come to the wall. And, and this is a big time for change in the in the IM so the breaststroke really shows you know right now our leaders might ne necessarily be our leaders in the next couple of moments it looks like our swimmer in the middle from Ohio State Catherine Demler has a pretty strong breaststroke great technique there but can someone close the gap here in the breaststroke leg 
Demler about a second and a half better than she was at this morning's split time, 217.8. She was 19.2 this morning. She's moving away from Dalkey. Dalkey did a good job trying to get up to her through the backstroke, but now Demler in lane number four, swimming for Iowa State University, starting to pull away, moving up in lane number three, trying to move up in lane number three. Ayla Jonvier from Point Claire. She was 454, four seconds back, but she is making her move. On Dalkey swimming in lane number six as the two swimmers try to get up to Demler in lane number four. And Dalkey's had a lot of experience on the U Sports stage, done some great things for the University of British Columbia Thunderbirds. This 4 a.m., she gets to train regularly with Emily Overholt, who we'll talk about very shortly. So, not surprising to see her pulling off a great performance. No, as we talked about earlier with our pair of swimmers, having the opportunity to train with the world record holder or other international teammates is something that a swimmer does look forward to and a great opportunity. Dalkey, the opportunity to train with Overholt. We'll see her up next in the A final. She's going to be battling against Sydney Pickram in the A final of 400 IM. Looking to get down to a 443. They were both better than that this morning at 41. Damler going through the first 300 meters at 340.45, four and a half seconds up on Dalkey, who's our top Canadian swimming in lane number six here in the B final. Damler, she's been 447, 450 this morning. And this is a race, as we talk about how physically demanding it is, it's very difficult to drop time in the morning and then drop time again at night. So our very, um, our national team athletes will try to swim at what we call almost as smart as possible, so give as much as they can, but also understand that they've got a little left in the tank, making themselves in a middle lane, hopefully, for the final. So we'll see who's left a bit in the tank, but it, you can tell here when you see some middle lanes dropping off, it is completely difficult to do a great morning swim and then another one in the finals after all the energy that puts into a race like this. And Demler in lane number four, looking to be under 4.47.4. Four. She's gonna be very close to that five meters to go for your race leader in lane four. It's going to be Demler from Ohio. Looks like a new best time. 4.46.9.0. Second going to Dalkey in lane number six. And that was a solid swim for her in 4.50.9.0. And rounding out the top three in the B final, it is lane number three. Ayla Janvier hitting the wall in 4.52.25. Well, that's interesting. It looks like the race winner, Catherine Demler from Ohio State University, was disqualified. So Dalkey will take the win in the B final. Jean Vier is second, moving up to third. Lindsay Pahalski, time of 454 7-4. Yeah, we'll have to wait and find out and see what the disqualification was. And in a, in a race like this, usually it's either a two-hand touch or some sort of underwater infraction. And with all four strokes being swum, plenty of opportunity to get disqualified, unfortunately. And that appears to be the end result for Demler in lane at number four. Metal presentations coming up next. I like can have metal presentations for the women's 100 meter breaststroke. Expect to see a very happy Kiara Smith receiving her gold medal. Lifetime best time, 106.54. A great swim for her to come back after last night's disappointment. Absolutely. A personal best, a gold medal, and the second fastest time in the world. Can't be upset about that. And not only that, she's getting herself down and close to that Canadian record. It's been 10 years since Anna Mae Pierce went 105.74. She did that at the World Championships in Rome. It was a part of the Super Suit era. And we're still looking for our first Canadian to get down to that time. Within eight tenths of a second, Kiara Smith. And here we see our three medalists in the 100 meter breaststroke. And there we go, Taryn Van Bylen, our one of swam this 100 meter breaststroke at the London Olympics almost wow seven years ago. I can't believe how long it's been. So that's Tara, a very proud alumni of the Swimming Canada family, giving that bronze medal to Rachel Nickel. Now heading over to Kelsey Wog. Now Kelsey Wog took about seven to eight tenths of a second off of what she was just a month and a half ago at the university championships to take gold there. So I'm sure she's happy with that improvement. 
notching that down and now has a spot at the Hunter Breaststroke as well to swim at the World Championships. And it was the best time, a lifetime best time by Wog by seven tenths of a second. A half second best time for Kiara Smith. So some solid swimming for our girls in the breaststroke. Coming up with some top 10 times, some world leading times in the 200, inside the top 10 in the world so far in the 100 meter event. And now we get ready for that all important and potentially world championship qualifying A final in the women's 400 IM. Top two qualifiers in four and five, Overholt and Pickram. They were only four tenths of a second apart this morning. I'm expecting a very good race tonight. Yeah, I, I have so much to say about those two. Two of our more decorated female athletes we've seen in the pool this week. And they have three tenths separating them from their best times. Now, those three tenths are the two fastest Canadians have ever been. So our current Canadian record holder, Emily Overholt, won the bronze medal in the in a time of 4.32.52 at the 2015 World Championships. And then Pickram did similar, winning the bronze medal in this exact event at the 2017 World Championships in a time of 4.32.88. So three tenths separating those two times. And the two ladies will be swimming neck and neck with each other tonight. What a great thing to watch. And let's not forget about Summer McIntosh in lane number one, the youngster, 12 years old. She broke the national age group mark this morning. Great to see a youngster like that right up here in the A final of our women's 400 IM. There's Overholt. And it's interesting how in two separate world championships, Overholt and Pickram both picked up bronze medals within three tenths of each other in the same event, the 400 IM. Absolutely, and not to forget, we have names like Erica sultan Reich and she was also an Olympian at the Rio Games just a couple years ago. Her best time, though, is from five years ago. So has she really focused more on the 200? Probably. But will she still be a threat in this 400? Absolutely. The name to watch, though, lane three, Tess Chapuka, had an unbelievable morning swim, swim here in the, the preliminaries. We had a huge statement and dropping a big best time. What, what I, I think, think is most interesting, though, is she, she had, had a great NCAA season, so I wasn't too surprised there. She had a time of 4.03 in yards, which converts to about high 4.30s. So, again, she could be a threat and potentially here to make another one of the Team Canada teams this summer. Well, I'm always amazed by the swimmers that come up from the NCAA program just within a matter of weeks having raced short course yards and now turning it around to long course meters. That is an extremely painful proposition, but these swimmers have plenty of experience doing it. It is a totally different world swimming short course yard to long course meters, but the three of them have done it and done it successfully. Yeah, as we get through here, the first 50 meters of Butterfly. Yeah, Mary Sophie Harvey out really strong. She was a name I didn't get a chance to speak of, but 2909 out in lane two. She was one of the dominant performers on the Canadian junior team many a times in the past. We haven't seen her in the last couple of years. She's dealt with some injuries. She's hoping to be back here in this competition and ready for more. And both Overholt and Pickram swim this race slightly different. Overholt a little bit stronger in the Butterfly. Pickram... Picks it up on the backstroke and the breaststroke. They typically come together at about the 300 and 350 meter mark for a similar freestyle finish. So we'll see where we get to on the butterfly. 1026, Harvey out in front. Overholt right there with her. And Sydney Pickram, more than a second faster than she was this morning. 10370 for her split. So those best times I spoke of, that 432 barrier, both of their personal bests. Interestingly enough, Overholt during that race was out in a 101.1. Pickram was out in a 103.7. So Pickram on that exact pace to go right around her best time. Overholt's allowed a little bit slower, but that was four years ago. She might have a completely different strategy here tonight. Right now it looks to be Overholt will take the flip. Oh, Pickram. And if Pickram is up with the lead as they turn on to the breaststroke, watch out. You saw her win the 200-meter breaststroke last night with one of those world-leading times. She was the best time in the 200-meter breaststroke by two full seconds. This is a very dangerous proposition to give her the lead at the halfway point turning on to the breaststroke. And this morning, she was the only swimmer under the 120 barrier for the breaststroke split. So that is, she was a 118.77. Keep an eye right now on Erica southenreich Hodgson. She's also a very world-class breaststroker, so she's definitely not out of this race quite yet. 
213.3, that is three seconds better than she was this morning for Pickram. It's right on the time that Overwolt was as they turn on to the breaststroke. A bit of a different strategy for Ovo, perhaps trying to save herself to give her a little bit more energy on that breaststroke. Pickram with the lead here for the first 35 meters on the first 50 of the breaststroke leg. And Pickram's going to be quite the threat here. Her flip at the halfway point, 213, is a little bit faster than she was when she went that time at World Championships. So keep an eye on her to maybe challenge toward that Canadian record. It'll be interesting to see how tired she was from last night's swim. Well, the standard of 443.06, it's not going to be an issue here in the 400 IM. The Canadian record, 432.5. The number one time in the world so far is a 433.83. And potentially we could see lane number five, Sydney Pickram, get down to that world leading time. And overhold, it's probably our strongest freestyler in the mix here. Tester Puka had our fastest freestyle this morning, but she had a lot to prove here coming in and dropping a huge best time. Overholt, though, in this exact pool, won the Pan Am gold medal in the 400-meter freestyle. She is a very well-versed freestyle swimmer, so keep an eye out for her on this freestyle leg. And here we go, 330.63. That is right on pace. It's about seven-tenths of a second over Canadian record pace, but if Pickram can bring this one home, she can be very close to that record time. If not that, a world-leading time of 433.83. Second is lane number four, Overholt. Overholt up and ahead of Chapluka in lane number three. Lane number six, Selton Mike Hodgson trying to get up there into the top two. Only two are going to be able to go. They're all going to be under this time of 443-0. Chapluka closing very well right now on Overholt, making up some ground there. She flips now in third. And Overholt's got a one-second cushion on Chapluka, but Chapluka moving very well. I don't think anybody's going to get to Pickram. She's got three seconds, two body lengths on the field. Lane number five, that is our race leader, Sydney Pickram, sitting unattached, trying to get down and put up a solid time this time of the year. 4.33, 8.3 is the world-leading time. She's going to be just over that, but a great swim of 4.35.15, the second-fastest time in the world. Overhaul coming in second under the standard. Chapluka in at third under the standard, as is Selton Wright Hodgson, top four swimmers underneath the standard. But Sydney Pickham and Emily Overholt look to be Korea bound in the women's 400 meter individual medley. And those two ladies have raced each other for, you know, the last five to ten years, and they're going to continue to push each other to great things. Now, not necessarily Canadian records threat there, but some great swims for this time of year. Two girls. Way under, uh, we actually had three girls under that st that FINA A standard, four, four girls under the FINA A standard, they just keep on coming. Um, but it's really, really awesome to see, and what I think is so, I think the big storyline here is Tess Chapuka. What an amazing performance, huge best time, notching another three seconds off of what she was this morning. We talked about how hard it is to drop a best time in the morning, and then another best time at night. But Talk about incredible for her to be able to do so in one day you talk about a best time it was a huge best time 17 seconds on the day for chapluka she came in at 455 ends up in 438 a great swim for her that's inside the top 10 times in the world by tess chapluka women's 400 individual medley is looking very strong at this point in the year for sure, and I'm looking forward to watching these ladies on the world stage. Again, we're talking about getting their spot on the team, and they're going to tell you about it. Sydney, a win last night in the 200 breaststroke probably took a little bit of pressure off just getting onto the team here today for the number two time in the world so far this year tonight in the 400 IM. Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely took a little pressure off, but going into warm-up, I knew I didn't want to miss out swimming this out world, so uh, I put the pressure right back on because I knew she was going to give me a run for my money. We always, we swim so differently in am, but it pushes each other really well, so I knew the two of us were going to go pretty good time, so it is what it is. I wish it was a little bit better, but hey, it's a uh, swim for the summer. Few months to get those little few things worked out as you head into worlds. 4 a.m., you really took off on that breaststroke leg. That's got to be part of your strength, obviously, with the win last night in the 200 breaststroke. What do you feel is the most challenging part of the 400 a.m.? Uh, diving in to swim it is <laughs> definitely my hardest part. Um, I always I get really nervous before the 4 a.m., and my coach was like, what are you nervous about? I was like, the fact that it's a 4 a.m. Nothing about the race or anything, but just actually doing it. But 
Uh, I have amazing teammates here that are supporting and those three crazy ladies up over there, my family. Uh, they love coming to Toronto and with their support, it's pretty easy. Well, congratulations, City Picker, on the win here tonight. Emily Overhead, ladies and gentlemen, on to the national team here again this summer for the World Championships. 437.88, the sixth fastest time in the world so far this year. It's about getting in those top two and under that FINA A standard here tonight. Yeah, definitely. Um, I come to trials and just working to improve, but the main goal here is just to make the team, so I'm really happy with that. Coming in, obviously, now got qualifying for the team out of the way, and as we talked with Sydney, it takes a little bit of pressure off of your remaining events for the rest of the week. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have a couple more events that I'm trying to qualify, so I'm hoping to get the four free tomorrow, but definitely takes some pressure off of the other events. Well, congratulations to Sydney Pickham and Emily Everholt on their qualifying here at the 400 IM, and best of luck for the rest of the week here at the Canadian Swimming Trials. And it's great, as we talked about earlier, that it's so competitive at the top of our women's swimming here in Canada where it's not a foregone conclusion who is going to win the race. Overholt and Pickram within three-tenths of each other, their best times. And here, this time, it was Pickram. Overholt's got a few months to get ready before the World Championships where she'll swim this event again. Yeah, and I think what's so special about Overholt is what she's overcome. She's had to go through so much with her mental health. She's been very vocal about that and has such an impact in the swimming, sport, all around community. I think it's incredible to hear her journey, but also to hear what she's been able to get through and how she's able to cope now. And seeing a result like that really makes you proud and, and have so much happiness for her that she's back and she's ready and she's uh, in top form and ready to compete for Canada again this summer. And here we go now with the men's 400 meter individual medley. First seat up, this is going to be our B final. Top qualifier in lane number four from Pennsylvania State University, William Lulick. It's finally 428.96 this morning in preliminaries. And off they go, it is. 428.9, the standard by lane number four, Lulick. The top Canadian is in lane number five, Richie Stokes from the University of Calgary. He was a rookie this year at the U-Sport Championships. He was 430.35 this morning. Lulick, the only swimmer under the 430 mark. Canada's had a lot of international success over the years in the individual medley. You go back to Brian Johns, he broke the world record. Short course in this event. Before that, Curtis Maiden. Before that, Alex Bauman, Graham Smith, Bill Sawchuk. A strong history of world record holders, not even talking about our current ones. We've had Joan Millar. We've had Marianne Limpert, who's picked up medals at the Olympic Games as well. As I said, a strong history of I am swimming in Canada. Yeah, and the 400 AM really shows a testament to the depth of, depth of the talent in the country. People that are able to pull off a race that incorporates all four strokes is even more impressive. Uh, I'm really looking forward to watching the men's A final and continuing to see who's going to be able to be our next name, as you mentioned, in the Canadian men's I am legacy. And, and it is Tristan Cote is the man to beat in the next heat. He's gotten the chance to compete at the international level, but he has not put himself in the mix yet for the things like the Olympic team. And so this is his big stepping stone in order to get there and we're hoping to see a couple maybe potentially one or two of the men under that fina a cut hopefully racing for canada this summer 417.90 is the cut that they're going to be going for in that next heat zakala 418.3 last year kote has been under the standard before he competed at the commonwealth games last year and the pan pacific championships in that event he wasn't down at that standard he was 421.4 the top qualifier we'll see him up in the next heat He's got to drop four seconds, essentially, in that event to get down to the qualifying standard. But there are other opportunities. If he doesn't get that cut, he still has potentially the Pan American Games, which he could compete and use that for international experience this summer, getting ready for the Olympic Games next year. Yeah, and you spoke of Brian Johns a few moments ago, but his Canadian record holds at 411.41. Now, we haven't had a male 
within five seconds of that, really, since. Um, we've had Alec Page, was our comp competitor in the 2012 Olympic Games, swimming the 400 IM. He was right around that 16-ish, 17 area, similar to where Tristan's at right now. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the next person to push that boundary and threaten that Canadian record. And we do have some youngsters that we're going to be watching in that A final. 16-year-old Jacob Gallant from Fredericton. He was 426 this morning. Probably not in contention right now to go 417, but some massive improvement by the youngster. It's national age group record holder and 13 to 14-year-old boys now swimming in the men's A final. A couple other youngsters in there. Patrick Hussey is only 18 years old. 426 as well from Point Claire. We'll look to see if they can compete up against the experienced men, which will be Kote in lane number four coming up in Zakala Island Swimming. And we're just getting set for what you call the most painful part of this race, that and that turn that turn from breaststroke to freestyle. Who's ready to, to dig a little deeper than the people around them? And Lula, two and a half seconds better than he was this morning at 321.6. Looking to improve upon that 428 that he did this morning up there beside him in lane number three, Grayson Bernard. He's a medalist at this event at the 2017 Canada Games as a youngster. Swimming for the Toronto Swim Club, 430.5 this morning. He should give that 430 a run for its money as they come to the last wall. Lula turning in 353.0. Now he's up three seconds better than he was this morning. So maybe get him down to 425. It should be a good one for Lula. Grayson sitting in second. He's gone fast enough now to get under that 430 mark. Swimming third in lane at number five. That's Richie Stokes, University of Calgary. Also potentially getting under 430 as they come to the close of this one. And here it is. Lulick in lane at number four. 428 this morning. Winning in a 424-0. Second going to Grayson Bernard in lane number three. Richie Stokes also under the 430 mark with a 427-83. Solid swimming. Brittany here in the B final, the men's 400 IM. Yes, some great races. Again, this is one of the more grueling events to swim. And if you're able to drop time from the morning to the night, that's an awesome accomplishment. So we just saw that in the middle couple lanes, actually. So definitely Will Lulek took a whole four seconds off. But then you also saw in the lanes beside him, Grayson Bernard dropped time, Richie Stokes dropped time. Some great performances here in the B final. And before we get into that A final, the men's 400 AM, we're going to have medal presentations in the men's 100 meter breaststroke. And Richard Funk. Not worried about the priority three or discretionary selection. Happy to be potentially on that world championship team, get an opportunity to compete at the very highest level. There you see kind of the veteran standing beside the future, right? So someone that's been around for a couple of years. And then the next up-and-coming athlete in Gabe Master Mateo. What an exciting time. 102.04, Wall picks up the bronze medal. He adds that to the silver medal that he picked up last night in the 200-meter breaststroke. A new national age group mark for Kenora's Gabe Master Mateo, 101.24. He took three 100s of a second. Off of the time that he did at the Junior Pan Pacific Championships last summer where he won the gold medal. And Richard Funk, which makes it even more Im impressive, the feats he's doing athletically. He's also now taking his master's. He's getting ready for a potential medical school. He's still thinking about life after sport, and I think it's awesome to see him still continuing to succeed, wear the Can Canadian flag on the cap, and not give up on his dreams in the pool. And we'll likely see Funk later on this summer, potentially as a part of Canada's 4x100 medley team. They'll look to qualify, look to get in the top 12 so that the team automatically is in for Tokyo. And here we go now, march out for our men's 400 meter individual medley A final. Yeah, and this is gonna be an exciting one. Now, I've spoken a few times about Tristan Cote. He, when he's on, he's on. And I used to train with him and understand the toughness that requires an event like, that is required in an event like this. So you begin to appreciate, he's also a freestyle specialist also. So 
keep an eye on him coming home. But again, we have so much talent in this. Josh, as mentioned, he will be swimming in lane five. Chief, Josh in lane five. He's going to be the second best on in terms of personal best times. He has a time of 4.18.65. He's also been the only other person to be under that 4.20 mark. And these two swimmers swim the race a little bit differently. Cote a little bit more relaxed relative to Zakala on the front half of the race. We should see Zakala out. Some fantastic back end swimming is gonna come out of Cote. He is very strong in the breaststroke. And as you said, a bit of a freestyle restless. He's quite strong in the 400 meter freestyle, but both he and Zakala split almost exactly the same this morning on 100 meter freestyle. So. While Zakala may take the lead early on, expect to see Cote come up on the breaststroke, and then all bets are off when they turn on to the freestyle. Yeah, I was hoping to see Cole Pratt in this. He had a great race this morning. He's scratched that to focus on other events here this week. So it's all eyes in the middle of the pool right now, but there is a lot of new opportunity to reach the podium in this heat of 10 men. And as you said, we did see a solid swim out of Pratt this morning, not in our A final tonight. He's got a number of events. He's entered in nine events here this week, not likely to swim them all. Looking at his best opportunity to move up from the junior team last summer, potentially to the senior team. So we'll see him later on in the program. But right now, our focus is on the middle of the pool. Cote in fours and Zakala in lane number five. And as Sydney mentioned when she was doing her post-race interview, the hardest part of that IM is that dive in, the knowing that it's starting and having to take that gear off of the mental side of it and just go and learn how to forget that pain as hard as it feels and give it your all. And this is exactly what we're going to see in the next three strokes of this 400 IM. All you can do is hope that that pain washes away when you dive in and that anticipation because it doesn't get any easier than the dive into the pool. It's all harder from there. Hitting the wall in the first 100. Look at that Montana Champagne. He won the U Sport Championships early in February. A time of 424. Champagne this morning went a little bit faster. 424-14. Moving up in lane number Two, that's Brian Palaszczuk from Regina. He swam for the University of Regina Cougars, was a medalist at the U-Sport Championship. Great to see a program like Regina producing finalists, especially in an event like the 400 IM. And I talk about this being an event to really show your team's depth, but amazing, as mentioned, uh, someone from Regina really making moves here, and we're seeing Brian Palaszczuk. He flips there at second in that 150-meter mark. Zakala now moving up in lane number five. We saw a very strong breaststroke, or sorry, backstroke leg this morning at 105. It was a second and a half better than what Cote put up on the backstroke. So Zakala looking now to build himself up a little bit of a cushion before they turn on to the breaststroke. But Cote, he's right there with him. This is a dangerous spot for Zakala to be in at the halfway point. And Tristan Cote swims is very similar to Sidney Pickram. Not that he lacks butterfly or backstroke abilities, but uses his breaststroke and his freestyle to his advantage. And here comes Cote. Cote, well, a second and a half better than he was this morning at the halfway point. And look at this. We've barely gone 25 meters, and Cote has gone beyond Zakala in lane number five. This morning, Cote, he was 242.9 at the 250-meter mark. We'll look to see if he's better than that. I think what's so cool about the sport of swimming is it continues. You're, once you're in the swimming family, you never leave it. And I'm looking right now across the pool at Brian Johns. He's coaching for the UBC team. He's watching these 400 IMers. I can't even imagine what's going through his mind. But he is our man to beat, and we've continued to talk about him. But he's in the building watching the next generation. I'm sure he's very thankful that it is not him in the pool right now in this final of the 400 IM. Cote Du doing a great job through the first 50 meters. Almost two seconds better than he was at the 250 meter mark. We're going to look to see. He's got to be down at 318 to get close down to that cut of 17. Let's see where he is at the 300 wall. Look at this, 317.74. He's only got to come back in a minute point to get under 417.9 qualifying time. It's going to be close, and he looks to have a pretty solidified first place position right now, but he's now racing the clock. He's looking for that 417 
90 barrier to break that FINA A. That's his guaranteed spot in the world's team. That's his goal coming here tonight. He's got to be around 348 as he comes to the 350 mark, and he is 348 too. That means he's got to go 29-6 on this last 50. It is doable. He's going to have to pick it up. He looks like he's got a lot of energy left there on the legs in lane number four. Cote having a great run in this 400 IM. It's going to be close. 10 meters to left. Cote looking very strong. 10 meters left to go. Keep your eye on the clock. It is 4 17 9 0. And he does it by five one hundredths of a second. Just underneath that cut, Tristan Cote, a great swim for him. Second going to Champagne with a three second best time in lane number six. Colin Gagne picking up the bronze in 421 49. How about that, Brittany? Underneath the cut by five one hundredths of a second. And he just sneaks under there, and he took a breath that second last stroke. I was almost about to freak out, but we're good. Um, an unbelievable swim there from Tristan. That's toughness right there. That is four strokes of being tough, and I know that face right now is absolute relief. I know I, I spoke to him quickly before the race, and all he had to say was, it's just this face of half fear, half excitement, half I'm ready for this, and right now, that's what we're seeing. We do have an, a disqualification that was just announced. It was lane one, the swimmer Brody Young. So he was out of the mix for podium potential, team potential. Uh, still unfortunate to go a whole eight laps and have a disqualification. But there, your newest member of the world championship team. We're about to hear from him. Tristan Cote in lane four. 417.85, five one hundredths of a second under that time. I think we're going to see, as you said, a face of relief and a face of excitement. Tristan Cote, 417.85, trying to catch his breath before he gets a chance to speak to Chris Highmark Watson. Looks like he's our newest member of the men's team. Going underneath the standard here in the 400 IM, 417.85. We're winning the 400 IM under Fina A standard by five one-hundredths of a second. To qualify the winners of the summer, Tristan Cote, you're cutting it a little close there, buddy. Yeah, I wish I knew I was cutting it that close. Uh, but, you know, I'm just happy to be under it. 0.05, it's not the best time, but, you know, I'll take what I can get right now. A few months to be able to work on some things, get a little bit faster, hopefully, this summer at the Worlds in Korea. Yeah, exactly. I was trying to... You know, last couple months have just been fine-tuning things. Um, but yeah, the next couple months are really just going to be fixing everything that I should have done in that race uh, and hopefully get a little bit faster than that. So you were right with Jack Bacala at that turn at the 200 and then you really took off, just like we saw in the women's race with Sydney Pickram in the breaststroke. That's obviously a strength of yours. What is the hardest part of the 400 I am for you? Oh, man. Uh, besides the whole thing, um, Sydney said diving in was the hardest part. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm right with her on that one. But, uh, you know, kind of just being easy but strong in the first 200. Obviously, the, the back half is my strength, so just try and do whatever I can in the first 200, be strong, but don't kill myself, and then, uh, you know, try and hold on. Well, congratulations on the win here tonight. Under that Cena A standard, Tristan Cote, best of luck with Team Canada this summer in Korea. And a great swim out of Cote to get underneath that cut. Not a best time, but right on it. Underneath the FINA A cut, which is, as he said, a couple months out from the World Championships, good enough, and he'll have the rest of the summer to prepare for Korea. Yeah, I absolutely love his honesty, his rawness. He's just, he's tired, he's relieved, he's happy, um, and he's looking forward to getting a second World Championships under his belt. He was our representative in 2017. Now we're going to see him again in 2019. Solid time, top 15 in the world right now. As we get ready for a very different event, the swimmer's nightmare might be the 400 IM. It's not quite the same here up next in the 50 meter backstroke. It's kind of a mad dash down the pool. But despite that, there's an awful lot of technical requirements in an event as short as a 50 meter race. Yeah, I know this is like the, the 50s, the stroke 50s especially are gonna become very interesting as this starts to be, be a more common event on a world stage. They are swam at the World Championships, not a qualification event for Team Canada, but we're looking to see some very competitive times here posted tonight. Canadian record in this event, a time of 27.64 set by Kylie Moss. 
2017 at the World Championships. And as Brittany mentioned, it is not a qualifier for the World Championships. Safina Acott, though, is 28-2-2. So we'll see how many swimmers we can get down to that standard. Top seed here in lane number four in the B final, Florida State University's Emma Taribo. She was 29-0-7 this morning in preliminaries. And that was the best time by Taribo by a quarter second. Here we go with our B final. And off with a clean start. Taribo in the middle of the pool. Beside her in lane number five, Christina Steins from Latvia. Looking to put up a solid time for her. Looking to represent Latvia at the World Championships. Taribo in lane number four though out with a half body length lead on the field as he come to the finish Taribo in lane number four from Florida State hitting the wall and winning our B final in a time of 28-8-0 that's a new best time for Taribo taking a full half second off of her lifetime best and she's pretty happy with that touching the wall with a smile getting under that 29 second barrier we also talk about there in second Christina Steins she's hoping to represent Latvia this summer at the World Championships, 29-22 will be the second place finisher in our B final. And we're gonna have medal presentations next in the, the 400 meter individual medley. Not sure our swimmers had, have had enough time to catch their breath and make their way up to the podium, but nonetheless, there they are. There will be presentations for our women in the 400 meter individual IM. And there she is winning the bronze medal, Brittany. One of the swimmers that impressed you most, Tessa Chapluka, going from 455 all the way down to 438. And underneath she, that FINA cut. Absolutely, and she's bringing herself from a competitive NCAA athlete and now becoming a competitive international athlete and we'll see her we have not seen the end of her we'll see her later this summer but you mentioned it's very hard to transfer from short course yards over to long course especially in an event like the 400 IM Sydney Pickham also did it with style but those two as they smile right now have been racing each other for so long and have this special bond they've grinded out some of the hardest races of their lives together and they stand atop the podium First and second. Right now, though, we're looking at our bronze medalist. My swim of the night, personally. Tess Chapuka, 438.96. A huge personal best, chopping 10 seconds in one day off her best time. Overholt, our Canadian University sport champion in this event. 437.88 here. Top 10 time in the world in the women's 400 IM. And that time will get her an opportunity to be relaxed. She's got a lot more racing left to go. The 400 free is a huge threat here tomorrow. So she knows that this is a little bit of a check mark off of her resume this, this week. But she's still got a lot left to go. Your race winner, Emily, sorry, Sydney Pickram, 435-1. Second fastest time in the world in the 400 I am right now. It's a very solid swim for her. She'll get ready for the world champion. She's already been a bronze medalist in that event and look to move up on that ranking as she gets ready for Korea this summer. And as Cindy spoke about in her race post-race interview, yes, she qualified for the team, but in order to swim this event at World Championships, she has to qualify. Just because you've qualified for the team doesn't mean you get to swim any event you want. So it is very crucial for some of these swimmers to continue to race well, to continue to race hard, because they want to be able to race the best in the world this summer in as many events as they can. And this should be an interesting one. Jade Hanna in lane number three. She picked up the bronze medal last night in the 100-meter backstroke. She was underneath the FINA A standard to swim at the World Championships. Unfortunately, she was third behind Ruck and behind Moss. We'll see what she does here in the 50. Hanus in lane number four, the top seed at 28-3-0. Just over that FINA A standard was fourth last night in the 100-meter backstroke. So I don't know if I'm the only one thinking this, but our world record, our only world record holder in the last decade, Kylie Moss, we've spoke about her many times, is actually not racing this 50 meter backstroke. So it's important to note that this is a open field and a lot of opportunity for someone to take 
this race. Now, this is not a qualification race and is probably the reason why Kylie is not racing it. She's giving herself a rest day. A lot of effort would have gone into the day yesterday. So I'm really looking forward to seeing a new national champion in here. Now, Jade Hanna, she'll be swimming at a lane three. She would be what I would call your threat uh, to win this one. She won bronze in the 100 here so far, but she also came seventh in this event at the Commonwealth Games. She was also the winner at the Junior World Championships in this event a couple of years ago, so a big threat from Hannah. And as you said, it is an open field. The top four swimmers separated by only three-tenths of a second from this morning's preliminaries. And in a race that doesn't have too much experience on an international stage, Jade Hannah has quite the resume in a race like the 50 backstroke, so she's your veteran, as we're going to call it. And watch to see where these girls are on the underwater. They can go all the way out to the 15-meter mark. And some solid swimming in the middle of the pool. Lane at number four, Daniel Hainis. Lane number five is Emma Ball. Lane at three, Jade Hannah. So keep your eye on lanes three, four, and five. Hannah doing a good job staying up there with Hainis in lane number four. And it is very close into the wall. It's going to be, it looks like four. It is Daniel Hainis, 28.03. That's underneath the FINA A cut. Jade Hanna also underneath that center, 28.20. And bronze looks to be going to Emma Ball in lane number five. So the medal state in the middle of the pool, 28.32 for Ball. And our new national champion in the 50 backstroke, Daniel Hainis. She's been around for quite some time. Backstroke has been so deep in Canada, so it's been hard for her to kind of change that notch from medalist at nationals to national team. But here we see her atop the podium. Danielle will be getting a gold medal here tonight, 28.03, and her teammate beside her, Jade Hanna, taking silver. Women's backstroke has never been at such a high caliber, a high international standard. The 50, the 100, and the 200 that we'll see later on, no doubt, will produce some very world-class swims. And up next is going to be the B final of the men's 50-meter backstroke. Canadian record. We're going to see the Canadian record holder later on in the A final. He holds that jointly. Javier Acevedo, a time of 25-1-3, which he shares with Russell Wood. And we'll look to see Acevedo later on in our A final. Right now, this is the B final of the men's 50-meter backstroke. Top seed in lane number four, Colin McDermott from Ohio State University. It was 26-2-1 this morning. Top qualified Canadian. Time at 26-92. That's Camo's Loic Saint-Martin. He is swimming in lane number three. It's a very close one here, as it usually is in the 50 races. Looks to be the middle, though. Not much margin for errors. They come to the wall together. And it is a time of 26-3-1. Colin McDermott at lane number four winning the B final from Ohio State University in the men's 50 meter backstroke. Yeah, and that was just one tenth slower than he was this morning. Loic St. Matan, the top Canadian, dropped a half second from his time this morning, going from 26.9 to 26.3. So a solid swim for St. Martin, swimming in lane number three. Yeah, dropping half a second in a 50 is quite the feat, especially from morning to night. So great effort there at a lane three. So the Fini A standard in this event, sort of the entry level point to international swimming. It's a time of 25.17. Doesn't really mean much in terms of selection here, but that is right around where the Canadian mark is, right around where Ace Avedo, who we'll see up in their next seat, has been before, did that time at the World Championships two years ago. Yeah, and Ace Javier had a not to say at all a disappointing hunter freestyle because he was still under 50 seconds. It's a great swim for him. But he just narrowly missed out on making that world championship team. So he's going to be coming in here with a vengeance, looking to prove something, and uh, hoping to get himself on the podium. Speaking of podiums, uh, we're checking out the men's 400 IM results at the moment. Bronze medalist Colin Gagne of Oakville Aquatic Club. That's a new personal best time for him, 421, 49, and a big smile on his face as he gets ready to step up. Great swim for Gagne to pick up that bronze from Oakville time, 421, 49.
And you mentioned Montana Champagne. He won the university championships just this year. Tristan Cote and him used to go neck and neck as Tristan competed for the Dinos. Tristan's finished with his eligibility now, training for in hopes to make an Olympic team, but this is a great stepping stone on the way there. And Gagne dropping seven full seconds here from the 428 entry time down to 421 for Champagne. He took off three seconds. And your gold medalist, Cote, right on his best time within a couple tenths of it, but good enough to go underneath that FINA A standard, 417.85, taking gold. They off to the World Championships later this summer in Korea. Yeah, you see that smile on Tristan's face. I can just feel the relief, the deep breath he can take tonight, knowing he got his qualification in and knowing he's got more great racing left to go this week. And up next, it'll be that A final in the men's 50 meter backstroke. We're gonna look for China's Tim Zhang in lane number four. He's a top qualifier, 25.68. He was fourth last night in the 100 meter backstroke. He's gonna have his hands full with Javier Acevedo, the second qualifier, 16 one hundredths of a second back. He's the Canadian record holder in the men's 50 meter backstroke. Absolutely, and this is another one of the guys who have come off of an NCAA championships. Unfortunately, Javier's turnaround is even shorter because that meet was less than a week ago, finishing up, and now he's here back for more. The 50 backstroke shouldn't be too much of a challenge, though. A lot of it's based on detail, and that's what a lot of the short course swimming is based on. And we saw a lot of personal best times. One of them coming out of Zhang in lane four. That was a PB this morning. But a name to note, Cole Pratt back for more in lane three. He was a huge personal best this morning. We saw him come second last night in the 100 backstroke. I have a feeling we're going to see more of him tonight. Yeah, as you mentioned, that was a national age group record uh, by Cole Pratt last night. His time, 54-64. It ranks him 27th in the world so far. A great swim by the 16-year-old youngster. He took down Acevedo's age group record. And there is Javier Acevedo. He's the national record holder in the 50-meter backstroke. A few youngsters in this event, a number of 16, 17, and 18-year-old swimmers in the final of our 50-meter backstroke. Yeah, and Acevedo's time is, as you mentioned, right around, around that, that FINA A standard. standard. So, so if, if he, he wants, wants to break, break that Canadian, Canadian record, record, that'll also get him under the time. That time for FINA A, 25-17, his current Canadian record, 25-13. And as mentioned, he shares that with Russell Wood. And here we go now, the final of the men's 50-meter backstroke. And they are off. Wash for the winter water in the middle of the pool. Zhang very good at it. And he is up and looking very strong here in lane number four. Beside him in lane number five, Acevedo also looking very good as it come down. Sebastian Somerset swimming in lane number two, looking solid as well. Only 10 meters left to go. It is anybody's race at the finish. It is Javier Acevedo, 25-6-9. Silver going to Zhang. Sebastian Somerset grabbing the bronze medal, 25-9-6, out of lane number two. So Javi takes home another Canadian National Championship here. His first of this competition. He actually just arrived last night, so this is his first day of competing. But he is now your national champion, 25-6-9. Not quite on that Canadian record pace, but still enough for a gold medal. Tim Zhang will take the silver from China, 25-89. And then our third men under the 30-second barrier, Sebastian Somerset, 25-96. And a solid swim by Somerset. He picked up a medal in this event last year at the Canadian National Championships. His first time under 26 seconds. 25.96 for the youngster from the Cascade Swim Club in Calgary. And that was our last of the able-bodied races tonight. So we're going to get ready to watch the Para 50 backstroke. We're going to start it off on the women's side, and then we're going to progress to our men's race. And talk about experience in this field. Nikita Enns, 
is 31 years of age. She's out here continuing to love what she's doing, continuing to race, and doing it very fast, I might add. And Anne's a teammate of the world record holder in the para women's 100 meter backstroke, Shelby Newkirk. These two swimmers swimming out of the Saskatoon Y Laser program. Top qualifier in lane number four by time, Clemence Pair from the Mustangs was 1003. She'll look to get under that minute mark tonight. And the ladies are getting set behind the blocks, ready to take this 50 meter backstroke. And here we go now, the final in the women's para multi-class 50 meter backstroke. And they're off. And as you said, all sorts of experience, Brittany, Nikita, Anne's 31 years old, swimming in lane number three. Top seed is fair in lane number four. She was 10032 this morning. She swims in the S5 category, swimming for the S2. Allie Van Wick, smart. She broke an America's record in the S2 category in the 100 meter backstroke yesterday. As we get this 50 meter backstroke underway, para in lane number four. Out in front, and like all of our other para events, they are multi class, so we will have to determine those final medal placings and results by para points. Absolutely, and right now our leader still par out in lane four. You spoke about that barrier, but one minute point three two. You gotta assume she's trying to get under that tonight, and it's going to be close. And it's going to be very close underneath the flags, and just a couple of meters left to go in lane number four. It's going to be pair right at the mark again. One double oh zero three. A very good swim for her, taking three tenths of a second off from what she did this morning. And our two swimmers this morning in the outside lanes, three and five, were 124 and 129, respectively. It looks like they're going to be underneath that, taking off a whole whack of time as they come in. Look at this, a good drop at 121.1 and 121.2. Three and eight second drop, respectively, for our two swimmers in the outside lanes. And the times are now official. So we'll have to wait, as mentioned, to see what podium position they will be receiving here. But the good news is everyone gets a chance to stand atop the podium. And they're just clearing the pool at the moment. And then we'll be moving on to our last race of the night, and that's going to be the men's 50-meter backstroke para multi-class event. And Jacob Bradshaw will be swimming in lane number five from Kishu. Lane at number four will be Jonathan Dealman. He was 57.9 this morning. These two swimmers just over their lifetime best, but very close. As we get set to watch our last race of the evening, evening, Jason, what's been your favorite race so far tonight? Uh, I am partial to the 400 meter individual medley. Um, it was a very exciting race. Uh, for, it was great to see Tristan Cote bounce back and get down underneath that FINA cut. Was very excited to see the women's race between Overholt and Pickram. But I have to say that in terms of uh, the, the, the race, being the most exciting that women's 100 meter freestyle 
that saw Alexic and Ruck put up times, top five in the world, would have been my favorite race so far tonight. It was quite the quite the performance there, and I think it puts them in a great position to grow off of that and continue to be a threat as we head to our world championships this summer. Canadian women have been doing so well since 2016, meddling at the Rio Games, meddling at the World Championships and the relays. Very excited. Canada's going to put up another world-class relay on the women's side of the 4x100 meter freestyle. We'll look to see if they can do the same thing in the 4x2 as well as the 4x medley. Yeah, I'm really excited for that medley just because, you know, starting out your heat with something like a world record holder, uh, a past world record holder, and then continuing to grow on something like we saw Kira's performance here tonight with a 106 mid. Then we have, you know, multiple options for Butterfly. We have someone like Maggie McNeil who's really been coming on, and then we have the names like Penny Alexiak. Taylor Ruck is in the mix here. So I'm thinking we've got a pretty world-class 4x100 medley as well. Well, as you said, Kylie Moss and Kira Smith, both of those times, the 100-meter backstroke, 100-meter breaststroke are world leading times and that's half of your relay and we still have some solid swimming to go and Taylor Ruck in the 100 meter freestyle we'll wait and see what we get out of the butterfly Penny Alexiak picked up a silver medal at the Olympic Games in that event so women's medley relay should be stacked as well Jonathan Dealman in lane number four leading the way 57.9 this morning his lifetime best a 56.90 swim Dealman swimming in the S5 category, representing the Bulkley Valley Otters. And he's just got a few meters left to go just outside the flags. Five meters left to go now for Jonathan Dealman in lane number four. Going to be just over that time he that he goes. did this morning. Dealman hitting wall first, 58-86. Great effort there again to do two different races in one day is quite the feat. So times within a second of each other. That's a great day for Jonathan Dealman. Jacob Brayshaw in lane number five. He's lifetime best 2020. He was 2066 this morning. And we're gonna see where he can get himself down to. He's got a little bit less than 10 meters to go. And Brayshaw swimming for the Kishu Swim Club out of Penticton. Interior BC swimmer at the flags now. Five meters left to go. It would be nice to see him break that two-minute barrier. He's going to be close to the time he was this morning, 206.61. And it's going to be close. 202.0 is his entry time. He's going to be right at that as he comes to the wall. Brayshaw, and he is cracking that two-minute mark. You called it, Brittany, 159.72. A great swim for Brayshaw in lane number five. And a big smile across his face with both gentlemen. Awesome to see them racing each other, supporting each other, and breaking new barriers together. And look at that. The announcer just mentioned S2 category. Canadian record for Jacob Brayshaw. And the men's 50-meter backstroke S2 category, 159.72. And I would assume that's our first male in that category under that two-minute barrier. So we talked a lot tonight about breaking barriers, but it continues to be a reoccurring theme. Great race there for both fellas. So we're going to have some medal presentations up next. We'll have them in the women's 50-meter backstroke, men's 50-meter backstroke, the women's para-swimming 50-meter backstroke, and the men's pair of swimming 50 meter backstroke events. And here we go with our women.
There you see Emma Ball representing Guelph Marlins Aquatic Club, also swimming at the University of Florida right now. 28-32 will be her time to take the bronze. Jade Hanna receiving her silver medal right now, 28-20. And her teammate standing atop the podium, Danielle Hanus, 28-03, a new PB for her. Almost shy of getting under that 27 or 28 barrier, but still a great swim there for gold. 27.64, you see that mark up there. That is the Canadian mark. It's not actually the trials cut, but that's the Canadian record by Kylie Moss. We'll probably see Moss competing at the World Championships in the 50-meter backstroke, even though she didn't compete at it here. Nothing says that she can't. And as the Canadian record holder and a competitor in the 100-meter backstroke, very likely we'll see her competing at this event in Korea later this summer. And we're getting set for the podium of the men's 50 meter backstroke. Taking bronze there, Sebastian Subberset just getting his shirt on on the podium. 25, 96 will be his time representing Cascade. Great swim by Somerset, under 26 seconds for the very first time. Picked up a medal last summer at 26, one, and here he is at 25, nine on the podium. Tim Zhang, his first podium trip. So far this weekend, 25.89 for the silver medal representing Chino. I believe Javi is warming down right now. I saw him hustle on over to the warm dump pool, so he might not be present here, but his gold medal time, 25.69. He is representing Ajax. Acevedo, the Canadian record holder in this event. Time 25-1-3, wins the gold in the national championships in 25-6-9. And we've got two more podium finishes. Oh, there he is. I knew he'd be somewhere. Looks like he ran here, he's out of breath, but there he takes his gold medal with pride. Directly from the warm down tank here behind us onto the podium, Javier Acevedo in the 50 meter backstroke. And it's a long competition, so those warm downs, that meet prep is really, really important when it comes down to it. You'll likely see him competing in the 200 meter backstroke later on this week. And this is where we find out the final placings for our top three in the women's para multi-class 50 meter backstroke. And there we are, the veteran Nikki Ann's picking up the bronze at 121.15. And there you go. You notice these podiums are very well accessible as they should be. So they get their moment to shine. And oh, look, we've got some help there for your champion at the moment. But there you go, bronze medalist receiving her medal. And from the Mustangs in Boucherville, Clemence Bray, she picked up the silver medal. And we will soon see Ali Van Wick Smart, who broke an America's continental record in the 100 meter backstroke yesterday, pick up the gold medal in our women's 50 meter backstroke. Ali Van Wick Smart taking the gold. And this is exactly why we wait until uh, the calculations are done because she did touch the wall third, but after 
the points are, are finished being tabulated, she will take home our gold here tonight and a huge smile across her face, which you love to see no matter what the competition is. Great performance there by all three ladies, your podium finishers in the women's multi-class 50 meter backstroke. And Van Wick Smart competing in the S2 category. Perry was competing in the S5 and ends in the S3 category in the multi-class event that is the women's 50 meter backstroke. Next will be medal presentations for our men's para 50 meter backstroke event. And our final podium of the evening. Again, it's a big question mark until we see them atop the podium. Who is going to be silver? Who is going to be gold? And it looks like Jacob Bryshaw from Kyushu is going to pick up the silver. That 159.72, first Canadian ever in the S2 category, under two minutes for 50-meter backstroke. He's going to get the silver. And I love seeing the sportsmanship, seeing them congratulate each other shot their way through this experience and and achieve really incredible things. And new Canadian record. New Canadian <laughs> Gotta record. be happy with that. It's a two and a half second drop but it is best time for Brayshaw. Swimming for the Kishu Swim Club out of BC. Bulkley Valley Otters, Jonathan Dealman taking the gold. Solid swims out of our men's in the pair category of the 50 meter backstroke. And that wraps up our podium finishers here tonight. We've seen some absolutely incredible racing here. And we talked a little bit about what our favorite ones were, but there's there's almost too much to count, right? I, I think so. And I, you know, I said the 100 meter freestyle, Brittany, but I'm, I'm thinking again that I almost want to flip-flop on it and say that 100-meter breaststroke event that we saw, and we saw Kira Smith bounce back from what had to be a tremendously disappointing moment after putting up the world's number one time in the 200-meter breaststroke, only to be disqualified, come back, put up a lifetime best in the 100-meter breaststroke at 106.5, one of the top three times in the world. I almost think I'm going to switch over to that one in the 100 meter breaststroke. Yeah, I'm so impressed with Kira's ability to completely transform her pre performance from yesterday and make it a personal best time in an event that she's a little bit less familiar in, but coming on strong. And now she's going to threaten the rest of the world and compete that this summer. It is. And it's a very exciting swimming tonight. We put four women on that 400 meter freestyle relay that are going to be very competitive at the world championships. Penny Alexiak, Taylor Ruck, world leading times you've got kyla sanchez in there as well it's going to be a very solid very good women's relay that will also be an exciting event to watch later this summer in korea for sure and we had a little bit of an upset on the men's side we expected to see kissel taking gold it was actually marcus stormeyer who's having an amazing meet taking the canadian record home last night he was our winner here in the men's center free kissel still with the silver, unfortunately not under the standard to swim it individually, but as mentioned, he's still got the 50 free later in the program. So we've got a lot of exciting events coming up later on in the program. Day number one was very exciting. Day number two, more records. We saw a few of them here tonight. Join us back here tomorrow morning for day number three, the 2019 Canadian Swimming Trials from the Toronto Pan Am Centre in Toronto, Ontario. Have a great night.